Welcome, class of 2022. Today we will be discussing your future, including registering for your senior year. Obviously, we are doing things differently this year because of COVID. We will be playing the registration voiceover PowerPoint. In-person students will have a counselor in the room to answer questions that you may have. Virtual students will email their own specific counselor any questions you have. Counselors sent out an email Wednesday, so virtual students should be able to find that email and access the handouts that we discuss. In-person students will fill out their registration form with pencil, and virtual students will type in their classes. We've got this. Good luck. As you know, you each have a counselor. We have five counselors that serve nearly 2,000 students. If you do not know who your counselor is, it is listed on your transcript. In addition, we have an awesome support team of Mrs. Teeley, our guidance secretary, Mrs. McMillan in the Career Center, who should be your new best friend as you start the journey of searching for scholarships, and Mrs. Nolan in the Records Department, who ensures your transcripts are correct and is charged of issuing official copies of your transcript. So what's the plan for today? We are going to quickly review your transcript, go over course options for next year, some post-secondary planning, which means after high school, and registering for, for next year. The PSAT is being offered this January for our juniors. We have a new way of securing your seat using a website called Total Registration. In your folder, you have a flyer that provides more details on the test and the reasons for taking it. This is an option for our four-year college-bound students. The fee is $17. Unless you qualify for free reduced lunch, the fee will be waived. Registration is open now and live for the website. Please utilize the flyer and the web address to secure your seat. We will test utilizing the auditorium, lecture hall, and library to spread out students. In late December, you will receive more information to prepare for the test, including a student guidebook and test day instructions. The Peoria Unified School District has been provided with a grant to cover the cost of a free ACT test to every junior in the spring here on campus. This is a savings of about $50. Universities and four-year colleges look at the first six semester grades through your junior year for admissions purposes and also to award merit-based scholarships. But many students still must do well in their senior year and complete the requirements for scholarships. The value of a test score is often understated because it has the most power to change the dollar amount awarded, and these college-bound tests are serious business. A difference of a few points higher on the ACT or SAT can make all the difference. Here's a quick look at U Arizona's merit-based scholarship scale. All three state universities have similar scales. Here you can see GPA is important, but ACT SAT scores are equally if not more important. One could have a 3.75 GPA and an ACT score of 21 and receive $4,000 a year in scholarships. However, with that same GPA, if they scored a 26 on the ACT, it doubles to $8,000 a year. That's just a five point difference. I want to talk to you for a minute about the ASVAB test. This is a test that you can take that is a career test. So if you are not quite sure what you want to do for a career, we highly encourage that you take this test. It will be offered on January 20th here on campus. There will be a follow-up meeting to interpret your results and hopefully you'll have a better idea of what you are interested in and what you would be good at for a career. This is also the test that you would take to determine placement in the military. So if you're interested in the military, we definitely would suggest you taking this test. Please sign up either using this QR code or this website address, and then we will know that you are interested in coming.
Now please take out your transcript from the folder you received. Virtual students, please refer to your course history on Student View. You should be familiar with transcripts by now. It shows your complete course history, GPA, class rank, and test scores. Focus for a moment on the graduation requirements credit summary box as shown on the screen. This shows how many credits of each subject are required for graduation, how many you have completed, how many are scheduled for this year, which is work in progress, WIP, and finally, how many are still needed? As a student who started Centennial as a freshman, you will need 28 credits to graduate and should have a number four or close to that number of credits you still need. Make good use of your senior year. Take classes that will help you explore careers, that will help your success in college, dual enrollment classes, AP classes. Don't be afraid to take risks and challenge yourself. We build next year's master schedule based on the requests you select now. As you notice this year, schedule changes are very limited. This policy will continue, so we encourage you to select classes wisely. Go ahead and take out your senior registration form out of your folders as well as the proposed course offering sheet which is the stapled packet. Let's start looking at next year's classes. But before we do that, take a few moments to fill in your current career goal and classes you are taking this year. If you are unsure of the classes you have next semester, it is listed on your transcript. These classes do not need to be in order and you do not need to put lunch as everyone has lunch.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's wrap this part up. If you did not finish writing in your classes, you can always do that after the presentation is over. As you've probably noticed, Centennial has been adding more advanced placement or AP classes. These classes offer a bit more rigorous curriculum than an honors class and allow students the opportunity to take the AP test in May to try and earn college credit. AP classes and test scores of three or better look good for most prestigious universities as well as college honors programs. Now that you listed the courses you are taking as a junior, let's start picking senior classes. We will all do English and Social Studies together. In the first box under Registration is English. You will notice all the choices you have for Senior English. Most of you will choose English 4. If you want to take English for Dual Enrollment, you will take College Prep English. If you're in Ms. Kaner's English 3 class, you'd probably take her English 4 class. If you want to take AP Comp and Lit, you would take that class. And if you're doing the AP Capstone program, you would choose the last option, which is AP Comp and Lit with AP Research. Both that class and Ms. Kaner's class are year-long classes and will take up two spots in your course registration. So if you choose one of these two classes, please cross off box eight on your registration form because you will not need it. We'll give you a minute or so to make your selection. The next box is Social Studies. Most of you will select the first option, American Econ, American Government. These are each half credit, nine week classes. You will need to enter both course numbers when you register online. Those of you on the honors track will select either the honors Gov Econ classes or if you want to go the AP route, you will select AP Macroeconomics with AP Government and Politics.
Everyone is required to take four credits of math, including Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. Many of you have already taken your fourth cre math credit by senior year. As you can see from this chart, the more math you have, the better prepared you are for college. We encourage you to take at least one additional math class your senior year. Referring to the chart on the screen, take a moment to write down your next math class or classes on lines 3 and 4 on your sheet. You can find the course ID numbers on the proposed course offerings list you have out. You may wish to Google some major maps for universities, which will show you what math classes are needed for each major and what your last high school math class should be leading into your first year of college. If you are only taking one math class, box four will be an elective.
Box five is for a science class or an elective class. You need at least three credits of science to graduate, but you can even choose more if you want. If you will not have completed at least three credits of science by the end of this year, you must choose a science class for next year. This chart will help our honors science students choose a science class for next year. Please note that some of the third science classes require chemistry first. If you are an honors science student and want to continue looking over this slide, you may want to take a quick picture of it. We will be moving to our general science slide in a moment. Here's the chart that will help our non-honors students choose their next science class. Please note that some of the courses require chemistry before you take them. I will give you some information about each of these science classes in order to help you make a decision about what you want to do. First, we have three levels of physics which would suit all levels of math ability. For example, lower level math students would enjoy the conceptual physics math class as their third science class while upper level math students would be successful in our AP Physics class. Chemistry is a prerequisite for many of our upper level science courses and is highly recommended for those considering the medical field. Earth Space Science is a fun class which will cover all of your burning questions about Earth or space. Environmental Science is also an option and you will learn all of the things that impact our environment. If you have already taken chemistry or plan on taking it next year, you can sign up for the classes that have chem as a prereq. These classes include AP Chemistry, AP Environmental Science, or AP Bio. You can also sign up for Biological Applications and Technology, or BAT as we call it, which has an emphasis on forensics. Human Physiology is an anatomy class. You will dissect things. It is awesome. This can be confusing for some, so we will give you about five minutes to pick your next science class, and the counselors will be around to answer any questions you have.
One more minute. Hopefully by now you have your core classes selected for next year. This is just a reminder of both the district's graduation requirements and Arizona University admissions requirements. Take a moment to ensure you will meet these requirements. As you already know, there are opportunities for being a tutor or TA. The same process will be in effect for next year as is currently. You will not sign up to be a tutor or TA. Instead, you will select elective classes. During walkthrough registration in the summer, we will have the TA tutor applications and chart out for you to apply. This is not a guarantee, so again, choose your electives wisely. You may also choose to take an eCampus class. You will still need to register for the course for now. Once eCampus registration opens for next school year, we can change that during walkthrough registration. If you wish to take a summer school class through eCampus, see your counselor in late spring. A few of you may have heard seniors who are on track for graduation can have release time. Policy states a senior who wants release time must be on campus three periods a day first semester and two periods for second. We want to be sure you're aware that release time does negatively affect class rank. On the back of your registration sheet is a release time form for next year. To be eligible for release time, you should be on track for graduation. If this is something you're interested in, please completely fill out this form and get appropriate signatures and initials. Without parent initials and signatures, your release time will not be processed. You will work with your counselor later this week on entering release time into Student View. A very popular class for seniors to take is professional internship. This allows you to investigate a professional career, learn workplace skills, have a mentor, be given release time for work, all while earning a credit. Hello, my name is Maya Melhon and I'm the lead recruiter with Westmec. Westmec is a Career and Technical Education District, or CTED, which means that we are one large district that covers many other school districts in our boundaries. Your district is one of the 12 school districts within our boundaries, which means that you're eligible to consider a Westmec program. Our high school programs are certification-based career training programs that teach students skills to prepare them for a career immediately after graduation and allows students to do some career exploration. Our 28 programs cover eight different pathways. These are architecture and construction, transportation, distribution and logistics, health science, 
Information Technology, Science Technology Engineering and Math, Law, Public Safety, Corrections and Security, Manufacturing, and Human Services. Our programs are hands-on and operate in addition to students' classes at their high school. Students are able to apply for our program starting sophomore year to be considered to start our program either August of their junior year or August of their senior year. Students spend part of their day at their high school and take classes like English, math, etc. Then come to us for a few hours each day for their career training program. As an accredited high school district, students earn elective credits in our program to keep them on track for graduation. In addition to this, some programs offer college credit as well. If you have any questions about our programs or would like to learn the next steps to get involved, please either email us at recruiters, R-E-C-R-U-I-T-E-R-S, at west, W-E-S-T, dash mech, M-E-C, dot org, or set up an office hours appointment by visiting bit, B-I-T, dot L-Y, slash W, M, office hour, or by meeting with your counselor at your school. Thank you, and I hope to see you in one of our programs soon. WestMEC is an incredible opportunity for our centennial students to learn a skilled trade while in high school. The opportunity again does require an application through WestMEC's website and admission into their program. Applications are open now. For those accepted and attending as a senior, you will be released early from our campus to attend your program and earn elective credit toward graduation. One-year programs are listed here on the slide for your consideration. Masonry and Concrete is a new program along with power sports, physical therapy, and environmental sustainability, which began this year. See the reps on campus on November 3rd or 5th during both lunches to learn more. In a few moments, you will be selecting your elective courses using the proposed course offerings list. Again, be sure to select classes you wish to take. We are excited to announce a new class for student athletes, strength and conditioning for both boys and girls. If you are playing a sport like football, baseball, softball, basketball, track, cross country, any sport, this may be the class for you. This class will also replace the fifth hour weight training class for football players currently. This is a quarter base class, so to take it first semester, you need to put the code in twice. If you are planning on taking it for the whole year, you would put the code in four times. And you can see the code for boys is 17210 and girls is 17211. This is also on your registration form. Continuing our excitement are some potential new classes for next year. We have four that we are proposing. The first one is American Studies. This class will present a multicultural look at America's society. The next one is Dactronics. This is be an informative and engaging class on how to use the software that controls Centennial Scoreboard. We also have Personal Finance, looking at student-centered approach to debt management, budgeting, investing, income, all the kind of things you need to know when you're on your own. Finally, we are proposing statistics. This would count as a fourth math class and is designed to develop a greater understanding and appreciation and skill and applying statistical techniques in the decision making process. Unfortunately, right now, course codes do not exist for these classes yet. So if you'd like to sign up for one of these, write it on your registration form and your counselor will enter the course codes once they are active. In case you sign up for one of these new classes and it does not make, your first alternate will be moved up to your requests. Let's talk a little more in depth about the American Studies class. It is a class that was proposed from a graduate of Centennial. So this class would further explore American history through the experiences of a diverse array of American groups. 
You will study concepts like identity, race, ethnicity, nationality, sexuality, and culture. You'll explore your own American identity. You'll analyze how factors like power and privilege impact history. Improve your critical reading and thinking skills. Have a more deeper understanding of our nation's past and celebrate its rich diversity. Course offering list. Again, be sure to select classes you wish to take. In a moment, you will have a few minutes to pick out the rest of your classes. When you are done, your registration form should look similar to this example. The career goal completed, all eight first choice boxes filled with course names and course ID numbers, all three alternate courses and IDs filled in, the off-campus options answered, and finally, you and your parents' signature. We now invite you to take a few minutes and pick some elective classes and fill out the rest of your registration form, including alternates. You should end up with 11 selections.
Be sure to share all this information with your parents. Completely fill out your registration form, including signatures, and bring this back starting Monday. You will also need to register online through Student View, as you have done in previous years, by 11.59 p.m. Sunday night. Directions are online, and there is a demo video that I'm going to share with you next. You can also find course description guides, as well as a Coyote Pathfinder, which is a quick guide to elective classes created through teacher and student interviews, on the website. Welcome to Centennial High School's online registration guide. Before proceeding further, be sure you have filled out the classes you are taking this school year on the registration form, as well as the classes and course ID numbers of the classes you plan on taking for next school year. Be sure that you do not sign up for a class that you will be taking in the spring. Please follow these steps to complete your online registration. Please note you cannot use the Student View app to do this. You must be logged into a web-based program. To begin, you will need to log into Student View through the district's website at www.peoriaunified.org. Once there, select the Students tab under the Student Portal. Once on the Student Portal page, click Click here to enter for Student View. Click I am a student. Log into your student view using your username and password. While in student view, you will click course requests from the left side menu. These are your course requests for next year, not your schedule. You will end up with eight credits worth of classes and three alternate credits. After you click course request, you will notice it says the next school year and the grade you will be in next year. You will see a button that says, click here to change course requests. Click that button. Type in the course ID code. Leave department, course title, elective, college prep all blank. It will automatically pull up that course and courses with similar numbers. If you search by class or department, you may not select the correct class. Course IDs are the most accurate way to find a class with which you are searching. For this example, the student is selecting English 3, which has a course code of 10300. Once you type it, it automatically finds the class for you. Click the Add Request button. And voila! This student has successfully added English 3 to their course request. Notice in the highlighted area, it says one credit. This should read eight and only eight by the time you're done with this process. Sometimes course IDs will yield more than one course. Double check you are selecting the correct course before adding it to your course list. Sometimes the course name will not fully appear on the screen. Again, use course IDs to ensure you have found the accurate course. Repeat the course request process until you've entered all eight credits. These should be your first choice course requests. Your total at the bottom right should say eight credits and only eight credits. Ignore the prereq not met warnings at this time. Once all eight credits have been entered, you will select three credits of alternates. This process is exactly the same, except you will click the add alternate button. Keep in mind, many students will end up in one of their alternate choices, so pick classes wisely and those you would not mind taking. We have a few classes that are labeled as nine-week half-credit classes, including Driver's Ed Rec Sports, Psychology Sociology, Creative Writing by Itself, and Rec Sports by Itself. Be sure you select the courses that pair together. Both of these courses will appear in the same line on your course request form as they will be worth one credit together. Do not mix and match half credit classes. 
They must be paired correctly. This is what a completed registration page should look like. Notice there are eight credits of requests and three credits of alternates selected. Simply log out when you are done. Changes are saved automatically. Be sure your paper registration is completely filled out and include parent and student signatures. Bring it to school next week along with your folder and its contents. Counselors will be meeting with you in small groups next week to review and approve your requests and answer any questions you may have. Thank you. We know we've given you a lot of information and you have a lot of things to consider as you start planning for your senior year. As a reminder, in-person students will meet with their counselor in small groups on Monday and Tuesday and virtual students will get Teams phone calls on Wednesday. Have questions for your counselor. We are here to help you. And lastly, please, if you haven't already, follow us on Twitter at CEHS Counselors so you can get the most up-to-date information from us. Thank you.